So this will probably be one of the best videos for you to watch if you're about to go on a date. I'm going to give you four body language hacks that if you can implement them, there is no reason why you shouldn't appear more attractive or hopefully sexier to the women that you're going on dates with. Something to be aware of with this is that this is not going to be an overnight success. So don't expect that the moment you start doing these four hacks, you're going to just instantly get results. These are things that are going to take time and practice and certainly awareness of and the more you can practice and implement them during your dates, then the more comfortable and confident you will be with them and they should override the anxiety you might have there instead. So the first one is eye contact. Now this is something that so many men struggle with because when you've got that anxiety taken over, you don't really want to be looking at people in the eyes. Now, there is a truth behind the concept that holding eye contact with someone is like staring into the depths of their soul. And it's true. You can create such a deep connection with someone simply by holding eye contact. Now, I'm doing it with the camera right now, trying to hold my gaze as much as I possibly can. Now, it gets to a point where it does start feeling somewhat uncomfortable and for guys who are anxious, you are certainly going to feel that with someone that you're on a date with, especially if you're highly attracted to them. Now, you're not looking to have a staring contest with them, but what you are looking is to hold contact longer than what's necessary. You're looking to be holding contact much longer than the average person who is incredibly socially anxious, who won't be holding eye contact. So first of all, let's just establish where that boundary lies. So I'm not going to look at the camera. I'm going to just keep staring and looking away. Now, imagine that rather than uh, me talking to a camera, imagine that was a beautiful woman who was sitting in front of me and I'm no longer now looking at her. I'm, I'm looking around the room. We're on a date together and I'm looking around the room and I'm not really engaging that eye contact with the person that I'm speaking to. Now, for you sitting and watching this, this is going to feel probably very strange that I'm not looking at you. And so you probably don't feel that connection. Whereas the moment that I can bring my eye contact back to what would be some, someone's of, <laughs> someone else's eyes, then absolutely you suddenly feel that connection there and the attention tends to be focused there as well. Now, when you create that tension, especially when you hold it for what's longer than necessary, you start creating sexual tension. And this is what's going to be connected to the other hacks that I will go through very shortly. So you don't need to be then having a staring contest with someone. And this is where something called fractionation or fractionating comes in, that you hold eye contact long enough to that point that you start feeling that tension and then you can look away and then you can look back. And all of that does is it just diffuses that tension and just brings that kind of like intensity down just a little bit so it's bearable again. And for those that are really good at doing this, you can play with that. You can hold eye contact with someone, especially if you're smiling, let's say, and then you can look away and then you can look back and you can practice that. You can play with it. And it's something that's a very easy one to do, um, especially out of, I think, all of the other hacks here where all you're doing is literally learning how to look at people. And you don't even have to practice this on a date. You can do it even in everyday life. You can be walking uh, to places. You can be on your way to work. You can be at work. But just try and get comfortable. Whatever the length is that you are used to holding eye contact, let's say it's a second. You can hold eye contact with someone for a second. Try and go for three. Or if you're not that brave, go for two. But just try and extend the length of time that you are holding eye contact with someone. And even just as an added exercise with it, just smile a little bit. And you will notice there is a different kind of intensity there, one that really does 
create some sexual chemistry between you and the other person. Now, the second one is slowing down your speed of speech. It's very easy when a guy gets very anxious, and I am guilty of this myself as well, to speak a little bit faster than you normally would when you're nervous. So this happens because you're just trying to get everything that you want to say off your mind quickly before potentially you forget. Also, when you're anxious, you find that your breathing pattern changes. And so you try and speak more because it's what you can hold in the breath that you've managed to take before you take that gasp to carry on talking again. But it's really important to try and slow down your speed of speech because there is nothing sexier than someone talking at a much more slower and sensual pace. And you can really emphasize then every word as you're speaking. And there is just something that just adds that sexual tension to your wording and your sentences as well. Now, this isn't going to make so much sense for a guy, but absolutely the women that you're speaking to will feel it. Women are so much more emotional creatures than guys are. Guys are certainly a lot more uh, logical thinking and overthinkers with things. Not to say that women aren't, but when it comes to creating sexual tension and playing with chemistry between people, you find that with women, that emotional stimulation is so much more important. And you can do that by slowing down your speed of speech. And I'll do a comparison here. So if I start speaking really fast, then maybe even like trying to uh, speak a little bit higher as well, which I will cover in my next point. But if I'm speaking way too fast, there really isn't anything sexual and there's nothing really that you can kind of grasp on it. Instead, you're trying to focus more on the speed of my speech and making sure that you are capturing every word that I say. Now imagine then if you're on a date with someone, you're not really setting the atmosphere. And that's a really key word here. You're not setting the atmosphere for something romantic to play out or for it to feel like it's romantic. So again, we're going for that emotional Uh, stimulation here, but we're not making it feel romantic if you're speaking fast. So I want you to practice speaking slower, slow things down, and slowing things down in combination with holding eye contact can really make a difference to how the situation can play out. And I know for me, when I've gone on dates and I've just changed these two things, so I have held eye contact longer and I fractionated every now and again when the tension gets a bit too much and I've slowed down my speed of speech, I've also noticed in my dates the exact same thing to happen as well. Now, there is something called parroting that when you maybe not so much are necessarily attracted to someone, but when you want to form a deeper rapport or a connection with someone, you tend to match their mannerisms or habits of sorts. So when you're slowing down your speed of speech and holding eye contact, especially in a very intimate uh, uh, location, so obviously if you're in a bar on a date, then you're going to create that much more sexual tone. Which leads on to my third hack, which is to lower your vocal tonality. So I'll give you two examples here, but imagine you've got a guy who speaks really high because he's anxious. So he talks, so he's, maybe he talks a little bit like this, or, or he just sort of talks like he's, he's talking with through the top of his mouth rather than sort of like speaking lower down. And so he just sort of sounds like maybe he's on helium or he kind of sounds like he's really nervous and anxious about going on this date. And it doesn't really sound sexual at all. Now, to be fair, I have kind of like overemphasized or exaggerated this example. Um, But it's worth noting that if you can learn or practice 
to speak at deeper levels, then you can also set a much more authoritative, if that's the right word, and more masculine tone to your voice. And that in combination with the speed of your speech and holding eye contact, you can make things sound so much more sexual and so much more interesting. And imagine then whatever topic you're talking about with a girl can really sound quite naughty. So let's use, for example, to really prove the point, let's talk about having breakfast. So this morning, I made myself some cereal and I poured in some milk and added just a little bit of sugar in just to sweeten it. So for guys watching this, you're probably thinking like, why is he telling me about his cereal? Well, it's a great exercise to do to practice the idea that it's not so much what you say, it's how you say it. So simply, and this is the exercise definitely for you to try at home, just simply practice talking about what you had for breakfast or lunch, or maybe even what you did for the day. Record yourself doing it. And when you're doing that, hold eye contact with the camera lens, slow down your speed of speech and lower your vocal tonality. And you will notice a big difference in how that feels. And also just consider again, that if you were practicing that with a woman, she would feel that, she would really feel that. And it interestingly creates this kind of like sexual tension and will probably even get her in the mood, believe it or not. And I know because I have tried it <laughs> in a very, very bizarre way, but I, I have tried it. So it works. But I want you to try that. Even just those three things can make all of the difference as well. Now, the last hack is pausing. Learning to pause in your sentences just adds to the tension of your speaking. Now, when you're on a date with someone, you don't want to necessarily be just sort of like randomly pausing where it's not necessary. So let's say you were talking about what hobbies or things that you're into, and then just suddenly you are having like these most random pauses. You have to kind of learn to appropriately add the pauses where necessary. Now, this might happen as the date goes on where you are trying to create that much more sexual atmosphere. So these sort of hacks, you might not necessarily want to do right at the start of the date. You might want to do just a little bit further into it because you want to get comfortable with someone. You want to just relax into the date. And then when you want to start escalating so you can start ramping that sexual chemistry between the two of you. And this is also where women complain that guys don't have that spark with them. It's because guys aren't creating that sexual tension. They aren't creating that sexual chemistry. But the spark is something that you can create. And it's just simply done by emphasizing these four particular things all together. So now imagine you are on the date with someone, you are holding eye contact, you are just fractionating only when that tension gets a little bit too much. You will know it, she will know it, and that's when you will do that. You will also slow down your speed of speech so it's even easier for the other person to digest every word that you're saying. You'll then even lower your vocal tonality. So it has that kind of like late night jazz voice attached. And then learning to add pauses in every now and again, just really, really adds that sexual tone to the conversations that you're having. And I can assure you that if you can do these four things on a day, you will really give her the butterflies. You will create that tension. And I wouldn't be surprised if after you probably nudged that little bit closer to each other, 
you'll probably be thanking me because I'm sure you'd be making out with her and maybe more as well. So I really hope that you try these four hacks and let me know in the comments below how you got on with them. Were there some that you found easier than others? Were they all a challenge? Did you do them all? Did it get you a result? Hell, I would love to hear if maybe you're a very anxious guy who hasn't maybe kissed a girl in a while and suddenly, oh my God, that streak has now been broken. I would love to know. And also if you've got ideas for further videos that you'd love for me to make, by all means, let me know in the uh, comments below. But otherwise, if you can, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Every like and subscribe allows me to reach even more guys and certainly help more men with their anxiety in dating. But other than that, I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to hearing some of your ideas and how I can make my videos sexier too.